Big news with Elon Musk, Tesla, Twitter. He says he's picked a CEO to run Twitter. Musk tweeted yesterday afternoon he's already hired someone and that she will start in about six weeks. And sources tell CNBC that Musk is speaking with NBC Universal head of advertising, Linda Yaccarino. Hey, hey, time for a Rick take. Linda Yaccarino, the new CEO of Twitter. Let's jump into the articles. <laughs> All right. So Twitter CEO Yaccarino lobbied Elon Musk to kowtow to corporate advertisers. Twitter's new CEO, Linda Yaccarino, suggested to Elon Musk in April that uh, this that he should consider reestablishing a Twitter influence council and further de-risk the platform to appease corporate advertisers. Yaccarino interviewed Musk in Miami in front of an audience of advertisers and campaign managers arguing, freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom of reach. What does it mean to the advertisers in this room? Have you de-risked the opportunity or chance of their campaigns landing in these awful, hateful places? Oh my god. <laughs> Yaccarino also suggested there is a necessity for advertisers to be involved in defining what's suitable on Twitter. According to Musk's new hire, advertisers need to feel that there is an opportunity for them to influence what Musk is building. Uh, this link, uh, a Twitter tweet from Mario Knopfel, the new CEO of Twitter. Linda Yaccarino, a potential new CEO for Twitter, is an executive at NBC Universal and holds a position at the World Economic Forum. I'll just highlight here is the Rick take. One of why the fuck are you putting a World Economic Forum person at the helm? They are cancer. Uh, I had to click on it to show more. Ah, the tweet is gone. No, it's still there. I lied. Last month, during an interview with Elon, Yaccarito encouraged him to allow advertisers to have influence on the platform. Musk disagreed, stating that it was wrong for advertisers to try to shape Twitter's content. Yaccarino persisted requesting the reinstatement of an influence council for advertisers to regularly interact with Twitter's leadership. Musk expressed concern that this could lead to public backlash. Before her potential role as Twitter CEO, Yaccarino had various positions at NBC Universal, including chairman of global advertising and partnerships. While I understand everyone's concerned after reading the above, I want to point a few important points. Working at WEF doesn't immediately make you part of the establishment. Is every politician evil? Every banker greedy? Oh, God. All right, fine. Sure. Uh, we can go on this premise, but like 99 fucking percent of the people that work at the WEF, they know what they're fucking doing. Come on now. If done right and without influencing free speech, communication between Twitter and advertisers is a positive. Elon can fire a CEO if they don't live up to his expectations. Uh, yeah, that's true. But why even? All right. I'm going to go back to this article. Mario is a. He has held wonderful spaces on Twitter. And he, he does do his due diligence most of the time. But in this, I disagree with him wholeheartedly. It's ridiculous. Come on. Elon's tweets. During the conversation, Yaccarino brought up Musk's own tweets on two occasions. She suggested he was too provocative and that he should not tweet late at night to avoid offending potential advertisers and risk losing investment in the company. So I'm just going to take a hard pause here. Essentially what Yaccarino said without saying was, Why do you have to be like Donald Trump? Why? Why? Rocket man bad! Most news organizations have a codependent relationship with Twitter, and I can speak on behalf of the industry, but I'll speak on behalf of my own company. We have a big partnership with your company, a big distribution partnership, 
There are days where I see some of your tweets and I say, I wish I could say, stop helping this situation, but should you be held to a different or higher a standard that you're the owner, but you also have the most followers and a lot of people think you might be too provocative. Moreover, she added, you probably shouldn't tweet after 3 a.m. Will you commit to be a little more specific and not tweet after 3 a.m.? People in this room would like to see that. What people? Uh, you? You're the only, you're probably the only fucking one that wants to see that. All right. Musk, however, was quick to counter the assertions. If I were to say yes, you could influence me. That would be wrong, replied Musk. That would be very wrong because that would be a diminishment of freedom of speech. Yakarino interjected again. I want to be specific about influencing. It's more of an open feedback loop for the advertising experts in the room to help develop Twitter into a place where they will be excited about investing money. Product development, ad safety, content moderation. That's what the influence is. Influence Council. According to Yaccarino, a potential solution for de-risking Twitter would be to re-establish what she refers to as the populated, much-loved Influence Council, which previously dictated would, could, or could not, dictated what could, not would, what could or could not be said on the website. So Twitter 1.0 had a very well-populated, much-loved Influence Council, I think we need to change the name. Elon doesn't want to be influenced, but it was really a recurring feedback loop from your key stakeholders, your advertisers, where they have recurring access to you. Would you commit from this stage today to reinstate that council to be named later? Musk replied, I would be worried about that creating a backlash against the public. Because if the public thinks their views are being determined by a small number of CMOs in America, they will be upset about that. And damn right we'll be upset about that. Come on. We just fixed this fucking problem and you're gonna just throw it right back to the wolves who fucking die. People who want this social media company known as Twitter to survive... That shit needs to not be reinstated. This is why I didn't pay for the blue fucking check mark. Because why pay for something that I'm going to utilize for free anyways? Especially if I go to shit post. I don't want to pay to fucking shit post. Although, I don't really shit post all that often anymore. Because it, it leads to more trouble than it's worth. In my opinion. This is why I do these daily videos. And I post them on Twitter. Because I can say more in this than I can clickety-clack on my fucking keyboard to type out the... Ah, oh, jeez. Anyways. Linda Yaccarino. Since taking Twitter over, Elon Musk has insisted he does not see himself remaining the company's long-term CEO. However... The announcement that Yaccarino would be Musk's replacement has left many confused and concerned. I'm concerned, not really confused. Especially those who trusted in Musk so much they signed up for his $11 a month Twitter Blue subscription. If you go onto the web browser, it's $8. Just a little life hack there. Before being announced as the new Twitter CEO, Yaccarino spent 11 years as chairwoman of global advertising at NBC, uh, NBC Universal, as well as operating as an executive chairwoman of the World Economic Forum. As a WEF executive, she has been highly engaged with the Value in Media Initiative, which aimed to reshape online discourse towards civility and reduce the chance of politically incorrect speech being tolerated online. Here's what I say to your politically incorrect speech. Fuck off. There's no such fucking thing. Now to the next article. Why is Twitter's new CEO, Linda Yaccarino, nicknamed the Velvet, the Velvet Hammer? I'm just gonna dispense with this joke here. The Velvet Hammer sounds like a cross between a sex position and a scrapped David Lynch film. Change my fucking mind. All right. Linda Yaccarino is the new CEO of Twitter. We already discussed that. 
She joins a company at a time when it is not only struggling with revenue generation, but also trying to transform into something entirely new. Until that happens, Twitter will continue to rely on its own advertising bucks. Yakarino is exactly the person who could throw a lifeline to the Musk-owned social media company. Lindy Yakarino has been nicknamed the Velvet Hammer in the advertising industry. A report by Wall Street Journal cites industry insiders claiming that the nickname is a reference to her hard-nosed negotiating style, which she has used to secure some of the biggest ad deals in television history. Yakarino is a veteran and executive with decades of experience. Ah, nobody gives a shit. <clears throat> and Yakarino is known for her tough but fair negotiating style, owing her the nickname, The Velvet Hammer! In the advertising world, she is known for her power with grace and tact. <sighs> All right. Well, as it says, she's there to destroy Twitter. Why? Because WEF ordered her to. Is that the truth? I don't really fucking know. But, man, this is just goofy. Let the Velvet Hammer do what the Velvet Hammer is going to do, I guess. You know? What can any of us do here at the bottom of the totem pole? Not much. Well, if you liked what you saw in this video today, subscribe to my channel. Hit the thumbs up button on the bottom of the video so that, like, I know that you liked my video. Uh, hit the subscriber bell so you're notified anytime I post, which is usually Monday through Friday. Anytime in the afternoon-ish. Uh, if you didn't like it, give her a thumbs down because I don't care. <laughs> hate watch it, hate share it. And because it is such a wonderful start to the week, it is a Monday. Happy Monday. I wish you all the best. And with that, peace out. And now for a meme. So remember, oh, Mr. Plow. That's my name, that name again is Mr. Plow.